Hello and welcome to this review of my Apple IIc keyboard. I got this as part of a trade for my old G81000 and I've been looking for one of these for a while because this keyboard uses Amber Alps and as far as we know this model is the only keyboard to ever have come with these switches. Best of all this is a replacement keyboard module and it's new old stock so it's absolutely brand spanking new it's never been used before. It even came with a bag of silica gel in there, which possibly explains why there's no rust anywhere to be seen on this thing. It looks completely pristine. And all of this condition stuff is very important because unused Alps are just on a whole different level. But let's talk about the thing itself first. The Apple IIc was a portable computer and it looked like a crossing between a laptop and an answering machine with the keyboard module integrated into the computer, hence why this replacement has no case to go along with it. The keyboard itself also evidently had no processing power because there's no controller chips on here or anything, which together with the absence of a case makes it really hard to date this thing. The 2C was sold from 1984 to 1988 though, so it's probably late 80s. Apple used quite a few different manufacturers for their keyboards, and this model originally came with Apple's own hairpin spring switch, which I haven't tried myself, but which seems to be universally acknowledged as being, and I quote, fucking awful. But for the later models, specifically the memory expansion variants, they contracted Alps to make them, who previously also did the keyboards on the original Macintosh and the Macintosh Plus. And Apple really must have liked the results on this because afterwards Alps made just about all of Apple's keyboards, at least the mechanical ones, right until they discontinued the AEK2 in the mid-90s. So these switches are Amber Alps. And yes, the slider color is almost exactly the same as that of Amber Omrons. And it's quite possible that Omron based the slider color off of Amber Alps because the Omrons came a few years after. They're clicky switches. And that's kind of surprising because Apple almost always went with silent switches instead. Indeed, their later boards used orange and then salmon alps, which are non-clicky tactile switches instead. And after that, they went for ivory switches, which have rubber dampers in them to dampen the keystroke noise, which they may very well have designed specifically for Apple, to be honest. It's kind of amusing that the same family of switches used for the same company went from this to this to this to this. So once more from amber to dampened. I suspect these Amber Alps might also have been specifically designed for Apple because they don't turn up in any other keyboards and Alps already had their well-established clicky blue switches on the market at the time, which it seems they specifically didn't put into the Apple IIc keyboard. Now, although the differences between blue Alps and their successor, the white Alps, is subtle enough that it's not easy to visually see these Amber Alps have noticeably different parts compared to either. Just like Blue Alps, they are first generation switches with no Alps branding on the top, a grey switch plate and dry lubricant applied to the slider. The springs look nearly identical, but the click leaf is quite obviously different. The retaining tabs at the bottom are much smaller, there's no upstanding lip near the bottom like on the Blue Alps, and the teeth are at a visibly different angle. The result is that they feel much more tactile, I mean a lot, and slightly stiffer. The tactility is very sharp, as soon as you overcome the bump, the switch immediately gives way right down to the bottom, and even if you avoid bottoming out, the bumpy feeling is extremely pronounced. Anyway, they're also stiffer, and although it's commonly said to be between 80 and 100 grams of force, which is very stiff, they don't feel nearly as stiff as that in the flesh, and 80 to 100 grams also sounds rather vague. So I did some repeated weight measuring tests on about a dozen of these switches, and I found that the weight is quite consistent actually, at around 75 grams of force, just a little stiffer than most Alp switches, which are about 70 grams of force. 
They really remind me of those mystery red and black Alps clones, which are also really, really sharply tactile. I'd love to get my hands on a board of these, by the way. The overall key feel is pretty much exactly the same as Blue Alps, very smooth and very pleasant, just a tad stiffer and more tactile. Blue Alps are a more well-balanced switch, I think, and I still prefer them over Amber Alps, but for those who think Blue Alps are too light or not tactile enough, and I know you exist, the Amber switches might just be right up your alley. For those who don't like heavy or very tactile switches, you'd be better off with Blue, though. Of course, as you would expect of Alps switches, the noise is nothing short of fucking gorgeous. Here, let me give you a quick demo. Makes you wonder why people even bother with Cherry MX Blue. The sound is deep, full and metallic, just the way it should be. I would compare it to Blue Alps, but that's not really a good comparison because this doesn't even have a case around it, whereas the Acer does. Seriously, in terms of sound, Alps is just the motherfucking Beethoven of mechanical key switches. The caps lock, in typical Apple fashion, is actually a real lock switch. It stays down when you press it, and then it pops back up when you press it again. These two weird buttons here do the same thing, by the way. It's because they use Alps SKCL lock switches, which use a latching follower arm. I show in detail how these work in my AEK2 video. Click on the link to see how that works. The caps are also pretty nice, they look a bit weird, and they have that impossibly ugly font in italics and in the bottom corner of the keycap on them, but they're made with high quality dye sublimed printing. And the keycaps themselves are made out of PBT, which doesn't yellow with age, and look at how thick these motherfuckers are, they're massive. By the way, although the key tops have a cylindrical profile, the caps aren't sculpted, which means that the keycaps aren't angled. You know how most keyboards, even modern rubber domes, have keycaps sculpted in such a way that they form kind of an inward crescent shape, which aids with typing? Well, these don't have that. They're not even steps like a staircase or something, such as on the Model M2. They just sit in a flat line. I presume this was done for the same reason the keycaps are relatively flat to keep the height of the computer down, which, in all fairness, they succeeded in. For obvious reasons, I can't say whether this is good or bad for a day-to-day -day typing basis, because... well... Another typical Apple trait is that they put the homing bumps on D and K rather than F and J. I'm not sure why they did that, I think it's just Apple wanting to be weird. And the nav, which comes in this rather useless line shape, also has a homing bump on it, on the right key specifically. Concluding, I love this thing. I wish I could use it. In fact, I think it's a criminal waste not to do anything with this. So maybe if there's a project or a group buy or something for 60% Alps PCBs, I might make a custom keyboard out of this because these switches are pretty amazing guys. They're just as good as Blue Alps, just a bit stiffer and more tactile, but they're really nice overall, and they sound great. That's it for this review, I hope you enjoyed it, thank you for watching, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.